Hey everybody, welcome to the 21st episode of the Top Cut. How's everybody doing today? Michael Ramos, Drew Holton, Way, Cram Rohano, all the way from Las Vegas. So uh, Las I guess Vegas, Nevada, baby. Woo. We'll see how everybody's doing. Starting with Krim. I don't think we can see you, but we have a nice picture of you. How you doing? Uh, well, not so great today, but that's all right. Um, I'm here in Las Vegas with uh, with some fellow Pokemon players, actually. Uh, I'm here with uh, actually Chad Harris, who obviously you guys can't see me on screen, but if you could, he's right behind me. And I also have Cena Gazi Askar, who's in the other room. I'll just see Pugliese, who, uh, for those of you who uh, were playing Pokemon a few years ago, he's been a world's competitor for a while. And um, also, my good friend is Real Robles, who doesn't play Pokemon. So, all five of us are here playing cards for the month, and uh, it's going pretty well. It's going pretty fun. All right, sounds good. Those are pretty big names in the game, except for Izzy, who was just your friend. But, uh, <laughs> pretty cool on the he would have been a big name if he would have played Pokemon. He's a genius. Yeah. He just paid me five bucks for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Drew, I know you just started work not too long ago. How are you yeah. doing? A little tired this week. You got to work 10-hour days, so I've seen better days. <laughs> and uh, thankfully, Krim's camera's not working. I don't really want to look at Chad or Cena, so <laughs> for the better. <laughs> All right. I know you have to work tomorrow at 7.30, so you are not looking forward to this, but it's all right. You made it. I made it. Yeah. <laughs> and all right. Fram, how you doing? What have you been up to? Doing pretty good. I uh, casted a couple games earlier in the week, so that's on the, our YouTube page right now. And uh, <laughs> I have a couple more games lined up, so I have a spot on store for a Pokemon. Yep. Anybody who hasn't seen those, check out our YouTube channel, which is... Top Cut Pokemon, youtube.com slash Top Cut Pokemon, and uh, those all go on our website eventually as well. So check those out. It's good stuff. So I guess uh, since Krim's internet is horribly unstable, as you can see by the bouncing Krim picture, uh, we don't actually have a visual of him <clears throat> because his internet is that bad. <laughs> so I'll be taking over the hosting duties for this week. You know what's ridiculous about that? What? And I mean, I'm gonna complain about this because I'm in the Las Vegas Strip. This should not be happening. I'm paying something like seventeen dollars a day for my internet. Also, I can do this thing, and it still doesn't work. Like, <laughs> oh my god! I, I like log on for five minutes or something like that. I start like typing something on Facebook, and then it logs me off. So sick. People need to fix this internet thing. <laughs> How hard can it be? <laughs> Even oh, the internet's a gamble. So, oh. Yeah, <laughs> it's true, man. <laughs> I gotta take over for the bad jokes too. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's move right into it. Uh, first topic is city championship. Just to recap, now that they're actually over in the U.S., I think they're still going on in Europe, um, but in the U.S. they are over for now. So uh, I guess we'll just go through how we all did at the end of it, and then talk about decks and <laughs> such. So I'll uh, we'll start with Krem again, I guess. How did you end up doing overall at cities? Not so great. Um, I only played in the marathon in one other event. Uh, I did the other event first. I ended up uh, losing out of top cut, or I bubbled out of top cut because I got uh, donked in my last game. So that kind of sucked. Um, but uh, after that, I played in the marathon. I did. I mean, you guys uh, already heard this uh, story last time, which was I did all right. I ended up winning the last one. I top forward one. I top aided one, and then I missed the other three. Bad deck choices, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, at the end of the day, I'm only at 18 points. So I'm not feeling too good, uh, too confident. But, you know, I top eight at regional, so if I can keep doing something along those lines, I should be in reasonable shape when it comes to uh, trying to run for uh, for a world's end button. All right, so how many points do you have overall? 18. Okay, so a little behind the pack right now, but uh, you can definitely make it up at states and regionals and such. So... Not out of it yet. At least you got some points out of the marathon. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Even though marathons are the worst thing ever invented. But <laughs> it's a topic for another day. Um, I will right, go on to Drew. How'd you do overall at Cities? And where are you standing at right now? I came in with one point from regional. So I started off a little hot. I top four <laughs> back to back days with Typhlosion. But then I realized Typhlosion is kind of bad. So I switched. To, I think that's when I switched to 
my trusty six corners. Yep. And I came in second and first with that. And then I top four with Durant. So pretty good run. Uh, I stopped going to cities after I needed the top two to gain any more points. So I ended up with 24 points, which is not very good. It's like 78. So. <laughs> well, still got more than Krim. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he actually didn't go to that many. He probably went. How many did you go six. to? Like five I went or six? To six. Six, yeah. So that's pretty good given that you only went to six. Uh, you must either have a soft area or you're just that good. That good. That good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with that. And, um, Ram, what about you? Uh, let's see. After the marathons, I did one more city after that. I played that, uh, Sigil Glyph deck. I was doing a <laughs> game. What? And, uh, oh, yeah, the troll deck. And basically it kind of let me down. Um, unfortunate. Uh, all, all the games I lost, though, were kind of, they were really close. And I did go second six rounds in a row. So maybe that had something to do with it. I'm not sure. Excuses. But overall, I feel maybe the, the deck, deck just sucks. I feel the deck is kind of a little... It's lacking in some areas, but overall, it's kind of, it's, it has some cute tricks. You hear that, Cyberbree? You hear that? I told you. <laughs> Did you use Sigilith at all? Uh, I wanted to. I did not. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I would power, I would try and power it up, but I would never have psychic energy for it. Or, like, when I did have psychic, I could never, like, dedicate the DCE to it. Things like that. Um, what was really nice, though, was Ditto and Seeker. I got a couple people with that. It was great, because, yeah, like, you would just go, like, Ditto, Seeker, and then catch your knockout for, like, a three a three Pokemon sling. And, um, yeah, so overall, I mean, I went 3-3 three and three with it, so I won half my games despite going second every game. So it's not bad, it's just, it just didn't work out, I guess. Alright, so overall after Cities, what is your point total then? Uh, 34. <clears throat> Alright, so pretty high up there. I mean, in a good spot for World's Invite. I think we're all somewhat in the running at the very least. So... Uh, not too bad. I ended up with 25 from Cities, so I have 32 overall. So, um, Cities went pretty well for me. I went to a bunch of tournaments, so hoping to do at least this well after flying out to Florida and then having another marathon near me. So I probably went to about 10 or 15 City Championships overall. So that's... It's actually not that many when you compare it to other people. <laughs> Pram definitely went to more than me. And I know Jason probably... Wait, how many did you go to? Me? Yeah. Uh, probably 10 to 15. Somewhere in between there. Can you narrow <laughs> that down a little bit more? To like, <laughs> you know, within one or two? Probably... Probably like 11 or 12. So that's how many I went to. It's not bad. I mean, that's a little bit more than double... Or a little bit less than double what I did. Um, yeah, I mean, you did very good, right? Like, you got uh, 20-something points. How many? 25. Thanks here. for listening. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to fix my camera, man. 25, that's pretty good. I'm impressed. What are you doing, Fran? You're labeling the cats? Well, I mean, <laughs> only you and I can show up. So, what? Krim has his face, and uh, Kyle I'm has... There. Yeah, I, I told you multiple times in chat to refresh Get a little surfboard. Around. Yeah, if someone can do a cat on a surfboard with my head, that would be preferred. Uh, <laughs> until we get back, uh, I just have a bouncing cat with the word puka over it. All right, we'll see. Should be refreshing. Um, but I guess we all did pretty well, so we have a pretty good idea of what did well. Mm -hmm. So I guess one of the interesting things I wanted to get into was I said a while ago that the interesting part about cities and the marathons are that the metagame constantly changes and eventually you start off with people trying out new stuff but then near the end you get to kind of a figured out and defined metagame so I just wanted to get you guys thoughts what do you think were the best decks by the end of cities and what do you think <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> what a 
that car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, All right, boy. so what do you guys? <laughs> what was that, by the way? That was me saying Thunderdome. I, I guess you guys couldn't hear that. <laughs> Thunderdome. <laughs> <laughs> Thunderdome. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, doing it, right? <laughs> yeah, except for I said it with more power, more like you know, more life to me. But uh, yeah, Thunderdome by yeah, far yeah. is. I thought you were dying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, don't don't get me I'm wrong. I did pick it up. I did pick it up. I just wasn't saying anything about it because I thought everyone picked it up. So I was like, oh, that's cute. All right, well, I so, guess yeah, we'll start with Krim. Yeah, what do you yeah. think was the best deck by the end? And what deck do you think kind of fell off by the end of City? Fell off? Yeah, like wasn't as good uh, as what you expected. He, he tried to trick me. He said the best deck, and then you said tried to fell off. Like well, expecting me to say Thunderdome. Well, it's like um, say both. Well, uh, I doing both ends of the spectrum. I'd be very surprised if Thunderdome was not the best deck by the end of the series. Um, I mean, I, mean, I, I would say Gothitelle, but obviously that died by regional time. Um, Ross deck also died by uh, uh, early on in cities. Um, all these, most of these decks like ZPSD, I don't think performed all that well considering the fact that it should have been the most popular deck. Um, I don't know. I think the, the clear two favorites were Chandler and, uh, and Thunderdome by the end of uh, Cities. So, at least in my opinion. So, I, I think the metagame got very defined. It's too bad that, you know, the next set is going to completely tear, turn that around. Alright, and Pram, I think you're going to somewhat agree with him, so what do you think? Uh, yeah, so the Thunderdome that's in his own electric is the best deck. Um, by far. Uh, it had to change a little bit because it had some problems with Durant, but overall, it, and it had some problems with Chandelure, but once you kind of cover those matchups a little bit, because the deck was like so non-tacked out that it could fit in those tech spots for the match, because it was like, no one, when it came into cities, no one really knew how it would do versus anything. It was just kind of like, hey, here is a good deck idea, right? So, um, when people go, okay, these are the matchups I'm having trouble with. Thus, I need to take these steps to overcome that. And when they did, um, it just proved to be a huge powerhouse. Um, decks that fell out from the beginning of the cities, I think ZPST was one. Um, I think Straight Typhlosion was another one that kind of fell. Like, rather, it didn't fall out, but it should have fell out. Like, people are still playing it, <laughs> but they shouldn't be, is the kind we of thing. We can blame Grant for that one. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's see. But Dex that kind of came into its own, I'll, I'll kind of add on, were yeah. Chandelure. Uh, that deck was a deck that no one really took that seriously, but ended up being super, super good. Uh, Dur Durant is the obvious one for this one. Uh, no one took Durant seriously. And then, yeah, one marathon later. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Yep. So, all right. Uh, and Drew, what do you think? I'm going to have to, unfortunately, go with the Thunderdome. Uh, yes! <laughs> even though yes. I played six corners. Uh, I think we just saw that as the cities wore on, people evolved the metagame. Got used to normal victories. All those decks that were good for regionals just went by the wayside. I mean, I was playing Time Flows in the beginning, and I was beating these Magnezone decks. So I was like, there's no way I should be winning this. Exactly. And the Kiram, it's impossible to beat Kiram with my or Time Flows. Yeah. So, as much as I like six cards, I think it's too weak to stuff like Lost Remover. So, Thunderdome's got to be the best deck. Yes! Alright, and uh, what do you think kind of fell off the map during Cities? Might have been good before, but got worse with the new I mean, set. Mega Judge definitely fell off. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Got Mega is horrible now. <laughs> Play a $5 card, it was $70 <laughs> a month ago. <laughs> yep. I would agree with that one. Um, I guess by the end of Cities, for some reason, I still don't feel comfortable it. with it. Say it. Say <laughs> I played it. it for my last two cities, and I took 
uh, made top four and won my last city. Uh, I did play the Thunderdome. Uh, I think it's a solid deck. It's weird, like, when I play it, I don't feel like I should win, but I still win. Uh, I always feel like I'm going to run out of energy or something's going to happen or I'm just going to lose. But for some reason, it just kind of wins, so I kept playing it. Uh, I think it's got the best matchups across the board, or it doesn't really have many auto losses. So I like that about it. And uh, Magnazone's pretty good. So I think Nudion, that's the deck that kind of rose up and made a name for itself <laughs> and stayed there. So yeah. that was the most consistent deck. You can't see this, but I have like a grin from ear to ear right now. <laughs> oh, trust me. So no, everyone can see it. <laughs> <laughs> you maybe you may not the grin you're making right now, but people can be like, eh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, I actually played... The deck actually got so popular in my area that I played a Terrakian in my version. So, played Thunderdome with one Terrakian and three fighting energy, so... Uh, that really helped against the mirror match, which I played quite a few times. Uh, actually, both weeks I played against Andrew Reynolds from around here, and uh, it was a mirror match both times. And Terrakian was worth his weight in gold, so that was kind of my little twist <laughs> on deck. Uh, but other than that, I think it was kind of weird. Some decks kind of rose up, and then they fell off anyway. Like the Six Corners deck, that was really big once people figured out that was a deck. It got played a lot. It got a lot of hype. But then near the end of Cities, people kind of stopped playing it. <laughs> um, they are like, oh, this actually isn't very good at all. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not really that great. You know, it's just a bunch of basic Pokemon, and you're just attaching a single energy every turn, and you can kind of lose the stuff. And that, that kind of fell off by the end. Uh, I think people went into it with stuff like Vanillux, thinking... <laughs> this is be great. We're just gonna paralyze people all day, and a lot of people played that at the start, and that didn't work out very well. That fell off by the end, uh, and then stuff like Yon Mega and Magnazone. That was a really big deck of regionals, and it just got destroyed by Eviolite. Basically, uh, it just could not compete with the electric decks. Couldn't compete with the big basic decks, and it just kind of got destroyed throughout cities. We, I don't think. It might not have won any cities, maybe a couple at the start, but a couple weeks into cities, it was pretty much a dead deck. And um, Typhlosion wasn't gone completely because Durant came out of nowhere, and that became a big deck. So I think by the end, um, Magnazone Electric and then Durant were probably the two most popular decks that I've seen. So, kind of interesting. I don't think it played out the way we all thought it would. Uh, also, the Electro deck was big, but I don't think that deck actually won too many cities. Did it win too many around you guys? I don't uh, know. Not really. I don't think so. Like, it did decent, but it never, like, went all the way. Uh, yeah. Electro usually caught up with it eventually. Um, I don't want one. <clears throat> but yeah. It won one of Two of the marathon tournaments in Florida. It won two. Electro won two marath uh, Florida marathon tournaments. Yeah. Yeah, I fell victim to Landris, and then um, Sammy won another yep. one. So yeah, Electrode was also a very very hyped deck with Cabalion and Kyurem, and that didn't do too well by the end of cities. People kind of figured that out too. Uh, so. Interesting though is that the list that. Both lists that ran Electrode did not run uh, Cobalion. True. So. Yeah, it's true. Cobalion did kind of fall off at the end, even though it was very good against Mirror Match. He's so good. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, yeah, that was kind of interesting, too, to see the little subtle changes in decks. Mm -hmm. You kind of switch decks once you know what people are actually playing. Because at first, Cities was just kind of wide open brand new set. People are still clinging onto their old decks like Typhlosion, Nine Tails, and Yon Mega Magnazone. But those decks kind of phased out. So here we are now. Um, so I guess after Cities, you know, we're in this brand new championship point system. We're just trying to evaluate it the first year. It's a brand new thing. So what do you guys think after Cities? Um, 
are they worth too much? Was it a good system? Just what? I guess we'll start with Brandon. Um, I think the point value may have been spot on, but I, I just like the number of best finishes I had to get. Uh, five seemed a little excessive. Um, I would have liked it maybe at four. Uh, mainly because it's tough. Like, you, you really have... I know people who didn't even get the five. Like, it's tough. Like, not even right. just tough. I'm right here. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> and I feel like if it's going to be something that's going to be pretty much a prerequisite for anyone who's trying to go for a world's invite via points, you can't have the... Uh, you can't have it be su such a high hurdle. So I, I feel like maybe four would have been appropriate. Maybe... I, I, would, I, I think like three is too low, but five is too high, so the only option we have is like four kind of thing. So. Yep. All right, and Drew, what do you think about the system so far? Yeah, I think it's definitely an improvement over yellow, but there's some kinks in the system. That, I mean, this is just the guinea pig year, so next year will hopefully be better, but as far as C's are concerned, uh, there's obviously something wrong, I think. Just look at the, go look at the seat, or the championship point rankings right now. It's so clustered. If they're going to let you play yeah. so many cities, they either have to, uh, like Pran said, bring down the best of limit or bring down the championship points that you win. Either one would work, I think. Well, I, s I feel like if they brought down the best, the best finish limit, they would have to keep the point value somewhat high. Yeah. Um, so you can't do like both. Do both. Yeah, yeah, you can't do both, but you can do one or the other. Yep. Yeah, I have to say, when I looked at the uh, ranking page, there were a few names I was surprised to see, but we'll get into that, <laughs> I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Let's get into it. Ah, uh, we'll save that for another day. We'll have no, a show. I, I feel like right now is a good day. <laughs> All right, Let's call some drama. What do you think about the system so far? I personally believe that we should lower the point value and reduce the best finish on the value. Uh, I believe that, I believe having it, right now it's at five best finish limit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I, I believe lowering it to four and reducing the point value by one would be nice. Um, so one across the board. So five for winning, four for second, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the reason being is that this has such a huge effect on it that if you cut, what, six possible points plus... Plus one more. That's you would get total uh, twenty, buddy. I know math is hard. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. I'm trying. <laughs> one, two, three. You can. You cut ten points. You cut it. A possible ten points. I think. <laughs> I can't remember. Just... <laughs> 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 oh wait. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Four yeah, times right, five. I know. <laughs> it's <laughs> rough. I'm allowed to have a little bit of a brain. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I get all a right. pass for this. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I believe that lowering it to a possible 20 points would be nice. Uh, cities is important, obviously, but they're they're still known as more of like a recreational event. I mean, obviously, it's like it's the beginning of the of the high tier events. You go to city championships, you're not expecting to have to play against uh, world champions and this and that all in the same event. That's kind of what it's become. Um, I know that every I mean, obviously, it was a marathon, so it's kind of expected. But every time that I played an event, I always had like all these 1800 rating plus uh, opponents that I had to go through. It was so sick. I always had, I had a ladder of, of uh, opponents who, um, who were just absolutely dominant players in the in their field. And every time I had to play against them, so it's just it, it's so competitive. I guess is what I'm trying to say that I don't think it's necessarily all that great for the game. I think um, states and regionals are have kind of fallen by the wayside uh, because of the point total uh, differential. I think cities have worked too much, so. You cut them down a little bit, bring them down to 20 points max, I think you have good things coming for the game. Because then at that point, states become... And also, regionals should be worth more than states, but that's a story for another day. Well, um, but if you do something like that, um, then I think that uh, the point totals would be a lot better off and, and we'd be seeing you know, a, a better picture than we see now. You know, to add on to that, um, I actually think it would... I actually kind of like the minus one point, minus one best of, because that equals 20... And then maybe if you cut Battle Roads down to equal 10 points total, that just because mm -hmm. I just like round numbers, maybe 15, <laughs> uh, 10 or 15, right? Um, I agree. So that's 30 points. And then you have, like, you can, like, read a, And I also disagree that... Or rather, I also agree 
that um, states should be worth worth less than regionals. So, you know, you could keep states the same, but you could bump up regionals a little bit with the points you shave off from cities and battle roads. And um, <laughs> maybe bump nationals up a little bit too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I can get behind that. Yeah. So I think we all come to an agreement that we kind of like that the system is being tried and maybe it's an improvement over the ELO stuff, but they just kind of need to tinker with the point totals and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt too. I, I just get the feeling that cities are worth too much. Uh, even though, like, they are extremely difficult, which, I mean, I learned the hard way going to the marathons. Um, it's tough to actually win a city nowadays, but at the same time, they are city championships. You know, there are states, regionals, and nationals above city championships. These should not be worth so many points, I don't think. And it actually kind of shocked me that uh, Battle Roads could be worth so much. You have a best finish limit of 8 for Battle Roads, so you could actually get 16 from Battle Roads, which is kind of strange. Yeah. Um, so I think yeah, the I fact that you can get... What's that? I said I'd like to get. I'd like to see that go down to ten possible. Yeah, you just so five. Oh, so best wow. Finish is five. He's back. I know. Back. Sorry, that, that just shocked me so much. I can take the picture <laughs> off. Um, basically, yeah. I was. I was also thinking about that. I was thinking maybe you could so cut. Back, huh? Yeah, yeah, you're back. Um, yeah, you can cut room. battle roads down to a. You can keep the point scale the same, right? Two one, right? But you can cut it down to a best limit of five, and then you have cities at a best limit of four. And then work it can work out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you get the maximum points from cities and battle roads, you'll have 46 points, which is like enough to get an invite. If you let that sink in, you can win an invite just from battle roads and cities, which is kind of gross. So I don't like that aspect of it. But uh, it is the first year, so I'm sure they'll change some stuff. I'll listen to feedback and. Yeah. It will improve. Yeah, they're pretty good about that. Remember that one year where Battle Roads was worth like 32k? Yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> like, I literally watched uh, Kettler go from no, no ranking to a world invite in one month. I was just I remember like, that, yeah. I was like, oh, Kettler. this... Uh, that's... <laughs> I'm, you just I'm really, like a bunch of Texas yeah, you, Battle Roads. You just get really jealous. Time. You just go... I wish I had that many battle roads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when I was like, oh, I really should have been going to battle roads. <laughs> yeah. Those are worth way too much, yeah. I'm glad they fixed that at least. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I guess we are done with cities. As weird as it sounds. Yes. Woo! They are over. Finally. This format is in the books. We will no longer have to play with just these sets. And of course that means we have a new set on the way which is Next Destinies with our best friend Mewtwo EX and his pals. So, uh, looking forward, what do you think is going to happen to the game? Um, is the hype real? Is Mewtwo going to be as good as advertised, or are we kind of overhyping it? Kind of like we did with Gengar when that came out. Um, do you remember Lost Guard dominated quite a bit in Japan, <laughs> and then when it came over here, it kind of fizzled out and it was horrible so um do you think same thing will happen with Mewtwo or is it the real deal and we'll Can start answer? with Krim <laughs> hell no this is not the same thing Mewtwo EX is ridiculous it's so broken it's not even funny uh, um if I'm wrong about this which I'm not <laughs> oh I get where the, the bounty cat is Every single one of these three guys will wear the bouncing castle. I promise you. Um, did my stream chat crash? What? What? What happened? No. no. Uh, you're so bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> you're like the Ron Bur. You are Ron Burgundy. We can put up some like totally inappropriate like string of text, and then you would just flat out read it, and you'd be like, with a straight face, and be like, mm, that was a good show. That was a good show. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta do that one time. <laughs> oh, yeah. To, to continue my story. There's just... I mean, 
I don't even think I'm exaggerating here. I really think that the me the the me too, the the format formerly known as uh, um, a balanced format is just going to become dominated by me too ex variants, and I don't see it happening any other way. I think maybe for a little while, while we still have the older sets, we might be able to get some good counters for it, like Magnazone or um, or uh, Mew or something like that. But as soon as it rotates, for sure V2 is going to become dominant. Um, I don't think Japan has it wrong because it's dominating in Japan right now. So I don't think Japan has this one wrong. I don't think that the the U.S. is going to be able to come with this entirely format breaking deck that just destroys all V2 decks. No, absolutely not. I think um, we're entering a new era. And uh, this era, actually, I, I have I have a high hopes for this era. I, I love EX um, formats where you just have these fast-paced games where a lot of the a lot of it comes down to being able to like prize race and sometimes people just don't realize that and you just i mean you win games because your opponent doesn't realize that he has to start taking thinking about um getting to six prizes before you do and he's still thinking about uh, establishing board position and everything like that and these ex um, these ex formats are really good about punishing people that, that uh that don't take advantage of that so um high hopes high hopes just for the record mewtwo did dominate when that set first came out but once the dark set came out, it has not been as dominant. So that set actually changed the metagame completely in Japan. So Mewtwo is not a huge thing anymore. Which is fine, because um, the, the dark Pokemon were supposed to uh, come out to be able to beat Mewtwo, I'm assuming. I, I can't assume any other thing. Like, if these Pokemon did not beat Mewtwo, then that would just be ridiculous, you know? <laughs> that's yeah. like his his bane. <laughs> so if these things don't beat him, then... That's just not right. Well, I don't feel like Mewtwo is going to be, like, I feel like it's going to be played in almost every deck. I don't think every deck's going to be Mewtwo-based. Is like, Well, I mean, if it's in every deck, doesn't that mean that it's dominated by Mewtwo? I mean, like, it's going to be in there as, like, it's going to be, like, Cold War style kind of thing. Like, you better not play Mewtwo, because I have a Mewtwo, <laughs> and if you, whoever goes Mewtwo first, just loses. Kind of thing. All right. I, I can and see eventually, that eventually someone goes next level and says, I'm not even going to play Mewtwo because you think I have it. Exactly, which is something yeah, I would do. I, 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 would to- play I would totally be that guy who just goes, well, everyone thinks they're playing Mewtwo, so I will sit not play Mewtwo kind of thing. But <laughs> that, that would be too early of an assumption for states. Uh, maybe yeah. regionals. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, like, I think that's what's going to happen, like, into, like, Mew, like, Mewtwo will be it everywhere, but it, it may not, it won't, like, dominate the format to where, like, you can't play certain decks because of this, because every other deck can also play Mewtwo, kind of thing. I also right, think and, some of the other EXs are pretty good, too. Yeah, we'll get those in a second. And, Drew, what do you think? Well, I don't know what the other EXs do, but I think well, <coughs> Magnazone is actually going to be pretty good still. Mm-hmm. It takes the trade, or the prize trade off really well with the other EXs. I mean, you don't care for energy for two prizes. You do that all day, so I think Magnazone might be the best deck. Um, but obviously, like Pram said, everyone plays Mewtwo. It takes for two colorless, right? Yeah. Just throw it into everything. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, see, the major difference I'm seeing when Mewtwo came out in Japan, I think they were playing black and white on, which, you know, there's really nothing black and white on that counters Mewtwo. It's just too strong. Um, there are no psychic Pokemon to take it out. There's no Pokemon that can really knock it on one hit. But we have a bigger card pool. We have Mew Prime. We have Magmazone. Um, maybe I'm wrong on the format thing, but I think we'll have enough cards to kind of deal with Mewtwo, so it's not just the thing. It'll be extremely strong, don't get me wrong, but um, I think there are ways to deal with it, and it won't be as strong as people think, because let's be honest, it's being hyped as pretty much the god of Pokemon that can't be stopped. Um, So, I don't think it'll be as big as people think, but it'll still be a factor. You're going to have to worry about it. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think that if you don't play Magnazone or Mew, you're probably going to be in tough, tough shape against Mewtwo. So, I mean, that alone has to mean a lot of things. Like, that's got to mean that the format will be warped around it no matter whether we play it or not. Well, I think Chandelure has a really good shot against Mewtwo, to be honest. Uh, What's Mewtwo going to do? 
60, 40. <laughs> and took HP though. Yeah, but that's two prizes. Wasn't that just load a bunch of energy and kill you? Yeah, but you have 130 HP. See, this is the next thing yeah. I was going to get to. I mean, there, are, there are EXs besides Mewtwo. Um, there is a Zekrom EX, which for 4 energy does 150 damage, and you discard 2 energy, which is probably the second best EX. Uh, I don't really like the other ones. There's also Shaman and uh, Kyurem, which is pretty much regarded as the worst one, and Reshiram. So uh, it does have stuff. I think one of the biggest deck ideas to come out so far is just Mewtwo Electric Power Up Mewtwo which, hey, what do you know, that lets you play Zekrom EX too, which does 150 so, um, I think combination of these two giant basic EXs could be big but, um yeah, I don't know, it'll be tough to counter Mewtwo unless you're playing Magnezone or Mew, or Mewtwo Yes, I was, about to get, I was, like, I was just waiting the talents, I was like, if he doesn't say Mewtwo you don't count oh, as Mewtwo? Giga. Forgot about that one. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. the gigas. It's not that good. Uh, but Mewtwo counters Mewtwo, so that's all you need to worry about. Like I said, Cold War, man. Cold War. <laughs> we all have a history of freaking out, too. Like, I remember when Regigigas first uh, was announced or whatever, it was leaked. Everybody just freaks out and they go, like, oh my god, it's the most broken card to ever see humanity, you know? And, um, and the same thing applies for pretty much Lost World and all these other cards dating back to the beginning of time so that's just i guess it's in our nature i guess it's human nature for us to freak out about uh uh cards that we deem overpowered but well, people sometimes we're change. right but yeah sometimes we're right but most of the time we we end up being wrong so i would hope that this time we end up being wrong because i do kind of want a balanced format with the ex in it that would be perfect that would be ideal in my opinion well i think the format's going to stay roughly the same just with like ex is in it like I don't think you're I, gonna see so. a, I don't think you're gonna see a Mewtwo based deck. Like that Celebi Mewtwo thing, that's just gonna get yeah, destroyed. I don't think that's gonna. Um, you're not so you're not, you're not gonna see Mew, uh, EX based decks right away because there's just not simply not enough of them. Uh, but you may see like decks that throw in EXs. I'd be surprised if they don't. Like that actually would feel like a misplay. Well, I think the rant stays. So, so much. Better. I think the rant is. Stays really good still. No, man. Duran taught Texan rush ramps all day. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Durant um, is sort of a Mewtwo counter. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think Durant's going to... I mean, it's going to see a lot of play just because it's so easy to play. Um, but I don't think it's going to dominate. Hey, hey. States the Jason way. would take great offense, too. <laughs> it's so easy. To Durant play. is easy to play. Difficult Very to play. Easy to play. Really. Tough to master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fine. I agree, but however, if I were to introduce, say, Izzy to Pokemon, I would tell him to play Durant, and he would more than likely have a good shot at doing well. It's just the way it is. It's just the, it's just the, <laughs> the nature of the beast. Um, one of the things I wanted to bring up is, uh, you guys remember back all the way to 2005 when a magical card named Battle Frontier was released? <laughs> yes. Everybody yeah. freaked out, said... Pidgeot is dead, Rock Lock is dead, Dark Pokemon are all dead, and uh, it actually influenced an entire regionals where people showed up and did not play any of those cards ever. Like, it was the regional where nobody played Pidgeot anymore, they all switched to Macargo. Nobody played Dark Decks, they all freaked out. And then we kind of realized, oh, you just play stadiums, and everything works again. <laughs> so, weren't we playing like five stadiums at that time? Yeah, that was like the uh, stadium. Yeah, you started a lot of stadium, right? Yeah, because yeah. you always wanted to get like down your initial stadium, but then had four counter stadiums lined up. <laughs> that was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that was a big stadium war, especially with desert ruins and all that. Oh, yeah, because yeah, like if one of your opponent's stadiums sticked, you just lost the game. <laughs> that was like how powerful they uh, they were back then. So yeah, so uh, we might be freaking out again. Who knows? We have a history of being wrong. Hopefully we're wrong again this time. Uh, um, you guys may have a history of being wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, the greatest that. theoretical mind has never been wrong, so... Except for that one time. <laughs> when was the last time I was wrong about something? Let's see. Waylord? Cal should know. Cal Waylord. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> I wasn't actually wrong about it. I just didn't have the time to protect it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you were you were wrong about two strength charm. I know that one. <laughs> oh no, I was not wrong about it. All right, no matter what you say. Um, you were wrong about Ente Raikou being the best thing ever. You spent months yeah, on your Ente okay. Raikou in front of luxury deck. <laughs> Uh, you were wrong about Dante and Dragons. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, guys. You're That's right. actually recent. <laughs> I remember that one too. Yeah, it was big regional switch. Yeah. <laughs> oh gee. All right, fine. I, I can't be wrong every once in a while. Um, all right. <laughs> by so the way, are... right, this is Kyle's job. This is Kyle's job today. But uh, please ask his questions on uh, Facebook, and I think right. he's actually about to ask that. <laughs> I already posted so good, but um, oh, I can't. I can't even see the chat. It's because your well, your uh, thing probably crashed, but yeah. Well, yeah, uh, at this point, you know, that's pretty much all I had. So we will move into viewer questions. I know we have some already. So uh, if you guys want to ask us some questions, we'll answer them real quick. And the link for that is facebook.com/slash Topcut Pokemon. Just put in the chat and all right. Go ahead and refresh, and I will see what the first one. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the first one, but I'll ask it anyway. From Isaiah Milton, how did Kyle take the Packers' loss to the Giants on Sunday? <laughs> and uh, not well. Had to talk him off the ledge. I took it extremely well. <laughs> oh man, I was celebrating with my friends, drinking orange juice. And uh, <laughs> just having a You're cry. allowed to say what type of drink you were drinking. No one cares. <laughs> Orange juice may have been involved. <laughs> Some cranberry juice. Um, it, was good, it was a good time. It was a great time. It was disappointing. Packers did not show up to play. Didn't show any heart. So when you're a fan, you just hope that your team actually goes out and tries their hardest and plays. You know, they're going to lose sometimes, but... Hopefully they don't lose like that. That was just ugly. So let's move on to the next one um, from Confessor Davila. I don't know how to pronounce that name, but that's my guess. Uh, question for the show. How do you guys feel about the Poke Gym topic in regards to intentional scooping in tournaments? So I've been stirring the pot in that tub. So what do you guys think about scooping to people, What's... whether or not you know them well, or not? I, I, I've kind of uh, well, I am very interested in um, so, the the main argument is the guy says, is it fair or moral to scoop to your friend so that they make it into the top cut? Ignore Chad over here. All right, we'll go with you, Crim. You, oh, I know you've been wow. a part of this. You've advocated this probably. What do you think about I scooping am... you to a friend so they can advance further? <laughs> I am a huge fan of uh, of this question actually because it. it um... I think it, it's going to help bring Pokemon to a new level of competition, hopefully. I would hope. Um, I think you should be allowed to scoop people in. I think you should be allowed to... Um, I mean, as long as there's no uh, bribery involved. If there's no if there's no incentive for the person scooping you in, other than just being a good person, um, then absolutely. I don't see a problem with it. I've never felt uh, that there should be a problem with these things. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast. That's just the nature of competition. If I'm, if I'm lucky enough to be, say... 10-0 or no, um, I don't know, X, X rounds at Nationals, and I have the privilege of being able to play against um, Kyle, who got paired up or something like that. Why not scoop him in? I'm already in. Um, why not guarantee him a win? That's just, that's just good sportsmanship, I think. Um, would I scoop everybody in? Probably not. Um, uh, it, it all depends. Like, if my rating's on the line, if, uh, if all these things are on the line, then, I mean, I don't have an incentive to do it, once again. Um, I was just being a good friend to my friends. If I don't know the person, um, I mean, there's a, there's a reasonable chance that I don't, but I don't think that's, uh, I, I shouldn't be forced to. You're not forcing to get people in. It's just a, you're, you're put in a good position. So if somebody um, like Kyle gets paired up against me, then great. You know, that's just great luck for him. And I would hope that he would do the same for me. But if he doesn't, that's fine. You know, I'm not, I don't require it of him. It's just, once again, good sportsmanship. And uh, I think that in competition, you're still allowed to be a good sport. And you're not required to make any, you're, Pokemon should not force you to uh, play a game out that you don't want to play out. You know, that's not right. Um, now, however, I 100% am against uh, taking uh, a bribe for, for scooping people in. That's, I mean, that's that's morally incorrect and that's illegal, so don't do that. But if you uh, 
um, if you don't have an incentive to do it, you just want to do it for the for the heck of it, then why not? And uh, that's my stance, and I'm not, I'm firmly against uh, against people, or uh, I'm firmly for that. I shouldn't say against, but I'm firmly for that. So you're for scooping to friends, but not scooping like saying, if you to... give me your prizes, I will scoop to you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as a matter of fact, if my friend asked me to that, like for example, say Kyle, you are X one, you get paired up against me, and I'm X O. No, I, at that point, I would tell you no. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't report you because. It's, that's not right either. I, I mean, I wouldn't report anybody. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, but I wouldn't like hide it. I would just, uh, I would just say no, dude. You know, that's not legal. Let's play. Because, and even if I, even if I actually had the intention of, of scooping to you, the moment you did that, you, you nullified that, uh, that uh, possibility. So yeah, 100% against bri- bribery. Um, but I'm for good sportsmanship. All right, uh, all right, Drew. What do you think? I think. Uh something like they have to allow like how do you police scooping people can just yeah. <laughs> fake play a game it's sort of like the declumping thing if it's something like you can't police why would you make uh <laughs> stuff like well that. you can't police bribery either though but uh they don't allow that you just which well they have the spirit ridiculous. of the game so well, they they, they <laughs> hope people will abide by like it. the only <laughs> well about that like the only people who would bribe are like people you would only bribe people who aren't your friends right yeah. so mm-hmm. Um, basically it would be done at the table and they would have witnesses like people who are next to them if they spoke up there would be witnesses of bribery whereas like if it's friends there would just be a mutual silent agreement of this is and if they're forced to play it out kind of thing yeah um, this situation actually came up with me this past city that I was at where um I was facing Adam Bernola in the finals, and he said, you know, I really don't care about the championship points, so, I mean, I'm just going to let you have the win. Uh, I also want to go watch Tim Tebow lose, but there's no really, there's nothing for me to gain here, so I'm going to scoop and let you win in the finals. So, this is something that has been a part of the game, will always be a part of the game. There's no way to stop it, Uh, and I think it brings up another question is, should they bring back draws? which is something they had a long time ago, only for one year under Nintendo. Uh, they had intentional draws. Do you think they should bring those back? Anybody? No. Yeah, uh, I think I think so. Uh, right. My reasoning is the top cut is, our cuts in Pokemon are too big. So after a certain point, there's just like the top X tables are all drawing. Yeah, you after would. After 4-0. So there's going to be people that are like 4-0 and 3 at Worlds. Yeah, you would it's see like unacceptable. <laughs> you would see like six, six two zero, oh, kind of thing, right? Or um, or five one or five three zero, oh, right? And, and they would make it. My, they would make it because they would be six two. I made it in the cut in four wins, two draws, one loss. <laughs> you know that's actually a good point. Um, but between the two answers, I would personally say. Raise the number of rounds, allow yeah. draws, make it the top eight cut. I think that's ideally what would happen. That's, I mean, in the most competitive TCG in the world, I know we mentioned a lot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> but the truth is, um, I mean, they, they have it right. Uh, it's just, it's it's the correct thing to do. I think that allowing a top 32 cut is so, I mean, I, I shouldn't say bad, but um, it's, uh, I don't know, it just, it, it's, it doesn't feel, you don't feel like you earned something by making top 32. If I make top eight, if I have to go like, uh, if I have to beat out X amount of people to make top eight, I would feel privileged. I would feel like, hey, uh, you know, I made, I, I did something well, good. I make top 32, it's like, oh, well, I expected to make it. And I, I know that sounds kind of cocky or anything, but the truth is that at a high level, um, at a high, if you're playing at a high level, you, sh- you do kind of expect to make a, a, such a big cut. You don't expect to make the top eight ever um, uh, at, at major events. I mean, you you're, you feel privileged when you do, but you don't expect it. But uh, at top 32, you kind of do expect it. <laughs> well, I'd like to add on that uh, basically, yeah, I'm that guy who goes, yeah, I'm expecting the top cut. I mean, like, well, yeah, I mean, and most people do. The the the, the truth is that most uh, pro- not professional, but uh, competitive players do, um, because it's such a it's such a wide cut that pretty much every competitive player can expect to do it, and only a few will be uh, will be kind of like, um, will we'll, we'll miss it, I guess, yeah. <laughs> So, um, I saw a couple of people in chat asking what actually intentional draws are. Um, back in the day, and with other card games, <laughs> you 
instead of playing the game out and there would be a winner or a loser, you would actually just draw. Um, you just wouldn't play, or uh, a game could actually end in a draw. You know, if you're tied on prizes when time's called, you could end in a draw. And instead of getting, uh, the way the system worked was you get three points for a win and then one point for a draw. It used to be two points for a win on time, but I think they phased that out when, when Nintendo took over. Uh, I'm not sure if they did or not, but it would be three points for a win and one for a draw. So instead of both of you uh, fighting it out and then one person winning, one person losing, you would just draw. So both people would not get a loss. So you would <coughs> still be ahead of somebody who had a loss. You'd be behind somebody who had a win, but um, you would be ahead of somebody who had the same amount of wins but then one more loss because you would have to draw. You would have one extra point and you would make it into the top cut. So, and one um, of the main reasons for this and uh, one of the best reasons as well is because it lowers variance and variance obviously is luck. Um, say you're say you're, you're playing for top eight uh, at nationals, you know, this huge, huge tournament. And again, I'm, I'm saying top eight because I don't think that it should be used for top 64 cuts. But say you're playing for top eight at nationals. You've, you've, made, you've made it through 10 rounds or something like that. You're nine and one, and if you miss, if you lose the last round, you're gonna miss out on top eight. That's huge. You know, you're nine and one. You just actually went nine and one at U.S. Nationals. You you should have the privilege, the right, to be able to say, all right, I uh, I want to draw here because I I'm in the top eight right now, and I want to keep it that way. You know, and that's that's kind of the reason they have this. And again, that this would completely change the entire tournament structure around. So I guess it's kind of like uh, an irrelevant question that we're asking. But um, but yeah, I do think that. This this game would be a lot better with uh, with intentional draws and with a smaller cut, because with the, with this larger cut, they're right. They're absolutely right. It's not worth it. It's, it actually is ridiculous because you could go four zero and then just draw and draw and draw in and make it, which is dumb. Yeah, and that's actually what happened. That's that was their biggest yeah. complaint about why the first worlds. Yeah, worlds five uh, one and two, I think. <laughs> uh, the the biggest complaint they have is people working together, and bringing in like teams of people and working together. Like you get to 4-0 or whatever, and then you just draw the rest of your rounds. Um, that was their biggest complaint. That's why they <laughs> took draws out of the system, and now we just have win or loss. And it also messed with ELO, I think, a little bit. I don't know if that factored in at all for them not bringing it back. But, um, yeah, that's why they got rid of draws. And that's the way it's been since 2005. They just had it backwards that whole time, man. Instead of uh, taking out draws, they should have just lowered cut and added a round or two. Yeah. Whatever, who cares? Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next question from Carlos Duran Jr. With Sky Arrow Bridge being popular in a Celebi Mewtwo deck, would putting in other stadiums and or using Victory Bell be semi-viable? Anyone want to take that? Explain what those cards do. All right, so <laughs> Sky Arrow Bridge. <laughs> Sky Arrow Bridge is a stadium. It gives all basic Pokemon one less retreat cost. Um... So he's suggesting people are using Celebi Prime. Uh, its oh, power good. lets you attach an extra grass from your hand every turn, and then it's got a one retreat cost. So you would put it active, attach the extra energy, Sky Arrow Bridge, and retreat for free, and you get two attachments for the turn. So they're saying, uh, is it worth playing counter stadiums just to stop that strategy? What counter stadiums are there? <laughs> just well, like, like um, Tropical Beach. There's like, there's like a lucky stadium where you can like flip a coin of heads, you draw a card. <laughs> I don't think that's too good of a combo, so I would say no. Runes of Elf. Alright guys, I will step out for about, I don't know, two minutes. <laughs> Alright. Cool. Um, and Victory Check. Bell. Victory Bell is not viable. I'm sorry. Um, Victory Bell's body adds to retreat cost the defending Pokemon, but it has to be active. Oh, no. And it's attack is So, we won't get the victory ball, I'm sorry. Not playable. <laughs> um, so, Skylar Knopf. So, how many points do you think is a good estimate for a world visit? Probably, like, upper 40s. Just, like, to be secure. Uh, the bubble is probably a little lower, but... Yeah, I, I was thinking like low 40s originally, but after seeing what happened after Cities, I think upper 40s, and I think there's going to be a huge tie for 40th place, so I'll definitely try to get as many points as possible. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, this number has changed throughout. 
49er stuff going on over there. Um, but this number has kind of changed throughout the season, and then we kind of keep raising the number, it seems like. And we're back. Now it might be like 45 to get an invite if you want to be safe, maybe a little higher. It's hard to tell. I mean, if you look at it now, I think Tyler Ninomura is in first place with like 42 points or something like that, which is a ton of points. And then you have a bunch of people. At, I'm at 32. I'm kind of like rounding out top 40 almost. Uh, <laughs> so like 30-ish around that area is the average for top 40 right now. So, I mean, it could be 45. It could be even higher. It's hard to tell. Well, I mean, you got to remember, these next points are going to be very hard to earn. Like the, the rest of these points are not going to be easy to earn. Yeah, that's why I figured uh, upper 40s would secure it. Maybe even low 50s, uh, but anything past that is, I highly doubt. Yeah, it's just scary to think about. Um, but from Caleb Sodding Mullins, what do you predict the best decks at States? Oh, well, this is easy. Uh, the <laughs> Thunderdome. The Thunderdome will be the best deck at States. Woohoo! Uh, it will yes. be included with Mewtwo, Completely probably. Agree. But I'm sure some way the Thunderdome will prevail. You hear that, guys? The Thunder Girl. Not Magio. Not Zonio. None of those random names. <laughs> the Thunder Girl. It will prevail. All right. <laughs> Drew? Well, I said Mike Zone was a pretty good counter from you two, so I'm going to go Zonio. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually don't know. I'm, I'm still thinking some sort of Mewtwo Electric Zekrom EX thing could yeah, be really yeah. strong. I have that too. I just added in Magnusode. Alright, my uh, Electric Terrakian Mewtwo Zekrom deck. Um, that could be the best. I also have that too. But I added in Magnusode. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, none of us know. None of us have tested with new cards. We don't even know what's in the new set yet, besides a few cards. Uh, we are just guessing, and I guess all of us are predicting some sort of electric Magnezone deck with different names. Um, alright, let's see from Andrew Reynolds. How many states are each of you planning on going to, and where? And there's a list somewhere on Poke Gym, but I don't even know if that's fully completed yet. Does anybody know what states they're going to? Yep, mine's zero. Yeah, I think I do. What? Zero, Drew? Really? Drew, there's yeah. one at Ohio State. I work on Saturdays, man. I'm a businessman now. <laughs> oh, it's busy season. On. I don't know. We'll see. I can probably send something. Just put in for, like, a day off. Call set. I'm going to be sick. going to three of them. Which one? <laughs> I'm going to be going to Las Vegas. Uh, the Nevada one. Uh, I'm going to be going to the Arizona one in Phoenix, and I'm going to be going to SoCal one in uh, LA. All three of them are SoCal different. has its own Perfect. state. All within like. Uh, I, I think Cali State is going to be in SoCal. So yeah, whatever. You know what? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, they're all going to be within. If, I, if I'm in Nevada, they're all going to be within six hours of me. How cool is that? Like, I guess it doesn't matter where I'm at. They're all going to be within six hours of me. So. Which, for the West Coast, is pretty cool. I know that you Midwesterners get them within, like, an hour. Yeah. But, uh, Three six hours. Six hours in the West Coast is pretty cool. Graham, do you know which one? Yeah, right? oh, I know two of them, but the third one's kind of up in the air. I think. <laughs> uh, I'm going to Maryland and Virginia. And then the one after that is, like, we don't know yet because the dates aren't all hammered in. Yeah. So it's, like, we're, we're um, fingers crossed it's Philly because... Uh, I do enjoy the Philadelphia market, but yeah. um, we'll see. Uh, I know I'm going to Wisconsin and Illinois for sure. I don't actually know what's happening week one. They have not updated mm -hmm. all the states. Um, unfortunately, most of the states so far have all been on the last two weekends. So The only one I'm not sure about is Iowa. If that's on the first weekend, then I'll go to that one. Otherwise, I might not be able to go to three, which would be a pretty bad disadvantage. 
Um, I think it's pretty important to go to all three weeks because states and regionals are going to be so important. You only get, what, five shots total mm -hmm. and it's best four limit. So, well, how'd you do it at uh, regionals? Made top eight. Yeah, you're probably not replacing that. I could know. So look at it this way. If you miss one, it's like you just didn't make cut. <laughs> 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 All right, that's a good way to look that at it. That kind of made yeah. sense, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> like, right, mine is top uh, 32. I will replace Ty that. Smith. Ty Smith. Why does Josue Rojano suck at math? <laughs> number one. <laughs> well, <laughs> any, any answer? <laughs> What's the reason? Um, well... Yeah, <laughs> He's so no, um, <laughs> I doing math on stream, man. It's not easy. I just did. <laughs> that's like, that's actually rule number one, by the way. Rule number one, uh, if you're ever doing anything yes. in public, is don't do math in public. Because your brain just starts like lagging and it just gets sad. <laughs> yeah. My brain does that automatically already. Learn so that. you do that, you put me on, I put did me, yeah, you put me in public and it gets I did weird. learn that, that you do not do math <laughs> in uh, public, but uh, I wasn't the one who started counting. I was just like, it's 20, man. Uh, and then you and then you continued to do math, right? I'm like, I did it for you. And then yeah. you, instead of going, yeah, it's like, it's no, 20. no, that can't be right. You must have done something. <laughs> you I you proceeded to count back 20. to 20. <laughs> All right, whatever. I'm here. All right, part two. Do you think Mew Zorark will be good? Ooh. Zorark's kind of cool. With the uh, EXs that have attacks that deal 9,000 damage. So, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> fine. Uh, it knocks out Mewtwo in one hit. That's my answer. It does, does not it knock out the other things. Do need anything else? Nah. Is Mewtwo weak to Dark? No, he's weak to Psychic. Yeah, Mewtwo is Psychic. How would Zoroark knock out Mewtwo in one hit? Z off or Zoroark. Yeah, how would... How would Zor... Oh, C off for Zoroark? <laughs> yeah. Oh! That's <laughs> yeah. You deal 242 or something like that. Yeah, and then you got the second attack. Oh, okay. Well, he needs to discard your energy. Yeah, but you get two prizes and you're gonna die anyway. Then you can just play plus power. Seems fine. <laughs> 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 no, and good, part good. three, is Puka bitter about the Packers? Yeah, yeah, we've been through that. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll place this, because he asked the fourth question. Uh, points for a top 40 invite, we already did that, so never mind. Alright, let's so we'll move on. New question. Let me refresh. Oh, there are a lot more questions now. Uh, from Benjamin Potter. How much of an effect do you think the other EXs will have on the format? Uh, so this is not including YouTube. Okay. So the other ones we have were Zekrom, Reshram, Regigigas, Kyurem, and Shaman. Okay, I got an easy answer for this. The only, all the other EXs other than Reshram and Zekrom are pretty much terrible. Uh, Zekrom is the second best EX in the set because it doesn't hit itself and it actually has synergy with Eel Trick. Um, and then Reshram just like knocks itself out. Like you hit once with it and then you're like, oh, it's just going to get knocked out now, isn't That's it? That's not a flip, right? I thought it was automatic. Is it? So look it up, and you can play Eevee Light. No, yeah, yeah, you can play Eevee Light, um, which is nice. Well, I personally think that uh, the EXs are going to dominate um, a combat. I don't think that aside from you and Magnazone and I mean maybe a couple others that I'm not thinking about right now, people are just not going to be able to attack with their normal attackers. They, they're just, you know. They're just so uh, so hard. It's so hard to kill a, an EX with these things well, let's see. that you're gonna have to use the EXs to be uh, doing damage pretty much the entire time unless you're using Magnezone or Mute or something. Like that. Let's be honest. What other attackers are there that other than Magnezone even now? Uh, I mean, you have Zekrom, non EX. You have a uh, Well, Zekrom turns. Is, yeah. Well, Zekrom. Yeah. What happens to Zekrom? I'll tell you what happens. Dragon. It just evolves yeah. and levels up into a Zekrom EX, and then it. Yeah, by the way, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's what I'm trying to say is like these EXs are gonna be dominant in this format because they're just so they have so much more HP and they have their attacks are just so much bigger. I mean even if Bread Gigas does suck, 
if you don't have lightning or fire energies, and I'm not saying I'm not advocating for the use of get rich again, don't get me wrong. But if you don't have fire energies for Russia, if you don't have lightning energies for uh, for Zekker, you don't have psychic energies for Mewtwo, which I mean at that point it doesn't actually matter because you're still playing Mewtwo anyways. But uh, <laughs> you're gonna want to play something that can attack, something that can deal a lot of damage, and that's probably gonna be Mewtwo. But if you don't have Mewtwo, you're probably gonna play Regigigas. That's your next answer. You don't have access to Mewtwo. You're gonna play Regigigas. If you don't have access to Mewtwo, you're you're playing Mew. You're just like see off that Zorark. I mean, sort of, yes. Say, they you know, just are the attackers. At a disadvantage, yeah. yes, exactly. Um, by the way, Rush Ram EX is a flip. If tails, you do 50, 50 of yourself. Okay. okay. Oh, wow. Play that with Victini. Play it with Victini. That way, you have a chance of... <laughs> you have really good odds of not <laughs> killing yourself. Oh, by the way, I see Kiram still uh, surviving the, the format thing. I think Kiram might still be able to... Yeah, I do. Um... I think it's going to be one of the few non-EXs that'll still be attacking. I'm not saying it's going to be great. I'm just saying it's going to survive. Yeah, I think it's still open. I see Rush Ram will be around. I think Typhlosion, Rush Ram, Mewtwo is an okay deck. Rush Ram will still be around. Pokelion will probably survive too, but I don't know. Yeah, that one for sure. Yeah. And Terrain. Yeah. That entire deck is probably still around. Verizia. Verizia is dead, man. is so good. <laughs> yeah, double draw to start off, man. Uh, all right then. From, I'm not even pronouncing that. It's just a bunch of scrambled letters. Is troll a relevant deck for the HS to ND format? No. Terrakian tornado. Is it relevant right now? Even? <laughs> it's kind of. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not trying to be rude about it. I'm just saying, like, it's only popular in the SoCal area. I think. Uh, there was. And, I had problems with the deck. There was a couple of, like, weird card choices. Uh, I think if it was... if I think if it changed up a little, a couple of things, it could be good right now. But when EX has come out, this is a totally different ballgame. So... Yeah, okay. not that... I don't think it's going to be that good uh, when EX has come out. Yeah. Well, uh, you could add um, you. By yeah. the way, guys, real quick, whenever we're done with that question, I have a question to ask from this very room. Sure. From within this very room. Okay. Go for it. Chad Harris asks, do you guys think and will get better or worse with the EXs in this format? Or in the format? Chad, why are you asking a dumb question? It's my first <laughs> response. <laughs> um, you've been there before. I don't know why you would ask this question. Poor Chad. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's for the viewers. That's his little. Yes, uh, that's his, like. And it gets better. It's better. <laughs> it's like, dude, you experienced this. What are you, why are you asking me this question? <laughs> more prizes taken quickly equals more devastating end, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, like all right. From Travis Nagler, did you all sign the petition against SOPA? I did. I actually did. Yes. yes. He drew. He drew. Like, <laughs> I saw it something like outside. Drew's like, what's SOPA? I was in the poker room. Before, like, and I used was, the uh, shower in the morning, SOPA. You know, I, I, was, I was in the poker room. I was Sopa actually in the middle of a... Uh... All right, guys. Let me tell my story. <laughs> um, I'm in the poker room, losing money, you know, normal everyday life. And uh, I, I try to Wikipedia something in the middle of the conversation, <laughs> and it doesn't work. And I'm like, what is going on? You know, like my whole world got flipped, turned upside down. Because because um, <laughs> that's 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 kind of like alarming. Like you don't expect for Wikipedia to be down. But anyways, after all that happened, uh, we all got into a heated conversation um, at the poker table, and I'll talk about that later, I'm sure. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, there was one guy that I met like since this whole SOPA discussion that has been pro SOPA and uh, and he didn't actually have a good reason for it so or even a reason for it at all so it's just it's ridiculous and uh, we should all support this this uh, this movement because can you imagine having our internet be regulated oh jeez we'd be shut no down way, man. yeah man no way no this way no would not exist yeah can you I mean that's so sick <laughs> all we're trying to do is help uh, you know help the community help things like that we would be shut down because the internet regulating and stuff like that. I mean, that's just us. Imagine other people. Like, people's livelihoods would be at stake and 
just not right. There'd be no more Bad Deck Monday. It would not exist. Yes. It's too bad. Actually, you, you know that? what? Maybe I can take out. Maybe I can. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, petition. where is the Pro Sopa petition? Come on. Bring it on. <laughs> 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 All right. So, if I um, ever have to hear not, that deck my day again, I'll be happy. Every time. To, uh, ask so this tough. next question, let's skip that one. Uh, from Justin Sanchez, what do you think of Tropical Tidal Wave? The ability to get rid of Eviolite and Sky Arrow with one card, barring a heads, obviously, <laughs> seems pretty powerful for evolution decks. What so evolution decks Drew, are I'm you I'm sure you don't know what this about. one does. So, I, know this, uh, I know this one. Let me... Let me <laughs> And for this. everybody who doesn't know what it does, Tropical Tidal Wave, uh, you flip a coin, if heads, you discard all trainers from your opponent's side of the field, which would include stuff like Eviolite. Uh, actually, I don't know if it would count Stadium. It does. Does it? I believe it so. encompasses all trainers? I, I believe so, is the way it was printed with the that intent. Okay, yeah, I think it would. So yeah, if you flip Tails, though, you have to discard all of your stuff. But uh, you would be discarding stuff like Eviolite. So, do you think it's playable? Well, when he said evolution for evolution decks specifically, I will counter this with another question: What evolution deck doesn't play Magnezone? <laughs> 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 and thus, the answer is you just lost run for 150, and then you're done. So it's either way, 130, whether they have 130 HP or 150 HP, it's still 150 <laughs> damage you have to do. Alright. <laughs> sure. Um, I think this is a card people kind of wanted to start using. I know Jason Kazuki actually traded for a tropical tidal wave so he could play them because he thought it would be really good against Durant. And then I played him two games and he cut it from his deck completely. Uh you just can't commit too much space to this card. And even if you do it's a flip. So half the time it does nothing for a questionable result not a card you can really search for unless you play Twins. It's just not that great overall. You'd probably be better off just playing stuff like Plus Power, honestly. So You know, it'd be good if it wasn't a flip, yeah. but because you can't rely on it. Um, like, imagine how bad Kieran would destroy Durant if it had a, just like a sure, like even just Windstorm, or like just, just get rid of like one or two tools, right? Like, yeah. Kieran would just auto win that matchup, hands down. But because it can't, then, yeah. We all know it is. All right. So, from Matt Shank, I know it's still really far out, but what do you guys think of the dragon type coming out? And oh, what do you wow, think... that is far out. <laughs> and what do you think the special dragon energy will do? My guess is that it will act like a double rainbow, but only for dragon types. That would be oh, so wow. strong. Um, that would be so strong. You know what? This is something you can ask me next year, because we will not see dragon types till after Worlds. Um, I've actually seen the dragon type cards, and most of them are horrible. <laughs> the only good one is the Salamence, which has a really, really good ability, but also its attack is horrible. So that's the only one with potential. I think it's cool to add a new type, but these cards are not very good. I don't know if I've you guys have seen one, so I won't the pass. Salamence. Them. The ability is every turn you get to force your opponent to discard down to four cards. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not bad. Uh, all right, from Britt Pibus. How much money are you up in Vegas, Grim? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I wish you wouldn't have asked me that today. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Why don't you say how much you were up before today and then That's leave it at that? Today. Alright, not counting expenses, I don't know, man. And, uh, remember, Vegas is very expensive. I don't know, like 2600 or something like that, but I've only been here for a couple weeks, a little under two weeks. Um, this week has been terrible. <laughs> so bad for me. But, uh, that's why I'm a, I'm a competitive Pokemon player, and I'm a <laughs> not a very competitive Pokemon player. <laughs> this sucks. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I... Poker is a lot like Pokemon, where you can have good runs and bad runs. Right now, it's a bad run. That's why I'm hanging out with you fine folks, releasing my tilt, and uh, I'll probably go back and uh, gamble some more after I'm done here. Yeah! Woo! Cool. Also, uh, never mind. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say. 
right. Probably good judgment. Uh, from Brad Curcio, I don't know how to say your last name. I'm sorry. Um, will you guys say shucks on the air for me? And start using shucks. it in your everyday life. Shucks. Oh, shucks. Oh, hold on. Let me, I can do better. Oh, shucks. It's just not a word for me, man. It's, I tried. I just can't <laughs> use it. All right, I'll moving use that on. on. Corn, I'm shucking corn. <laughs> or shuckle. Uh, yeah. From Michael Chin, off topic. If the congressional bills of SOPA or PIPA were to pass, how will it affect the Pokemon community in terms of coverage for growing the game, including VGC? Personally, I don't think the bills are going to pass, but he's just curious. And I think that would be horrible um, because it would really crack down on what we could do. Even me streaming PTCGO or making YouTube videos about it would be grounds for them to sue me. So, um, no, that would not be good for growing the game, I don't think. I don't know, what do you guys think? <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty much that. Like, a lot of the stuff we do would pretty much come to a halt. Uh, probably have to close down shop. So. <laughs> From what I know, I don't know everything about those. Oh, I got those bills, but uh, yeah, probably not good. From Andrew Carbon, do you guys think that Level Ball and Heavy Ball will be strong enough to completely replace Pokemon Communication in the next format, or do you think that Pokemon Communication will still be around in some way? Uh, Pokemon Communication should still be around. It's so good. But Heavy Ball and Level Ball are pretty good, too. Um, but Communication is just uh, like, it gets everything. It's just too impressive, so, so important. Which one does which? I know one searches level for... Level Ball gets three Retreat or more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. three Retreat or more, and Level Ball does 90 HP or less. Um, one of, you have to discard two cards for... That's Ultra that's Ball. Ultra Ball, Ultra Ball oh, yeah, that's not is... Out. Okay, okay, so basically this is the order of card searches. Ultra Ball is number one, Communication, and then anything else. Exactly. All right. Ultra Ball, when it comes out, is going to be dumb. Oh man, is that good? I hope it comes out with Magnezone still in the fourth pack, because I'm just going to be like, jumping up and down and static. <laughs> I'll have rare candy, two Match lightning all over. You have like two, uh, two lightning, a rare candy, and an Ultra Ball, and you're just like, this is perfect. <laughs> uh, looks like SoCal Matt says Ultra Ball is not going to be in the set. So not this set. Yeah, yeah maybe I don't think it would be though. either, but it's going to There are rumors that Heatmore will be in the set, though. So we'll see. <laughs> uh, also, what do you guys think of the current time rules during each matchup? I wound up losing a game in time that I thought I could have won if the game was played up in full and it cost me top cut. Went 4-2. and two. My opponent played a good game and deserved it. But do you think anything about the time rules should change? I think you're a great sport, Andrew. Um, uh, right now it's, what, 30 with plus 3? So, no, I think that's fine. Um, I mean... Yeah, we had unlimited time, and if some of us didn't get sleepy and all that good stuff, yeah, 45 minutes with plus three would be ideal, but it's just not going to happen. We just don't have that kind of time. Tournaments already go late enough as it is. Um, yeah. But uh, 30 plus three, I'm not, I'm not going to complain about 30 plus three. Pers I know Jason Kuzinski. Yeah, personally, I think um, 30 plus three is more than enough time than we need. I, like, I wouldn't want to see less, but I don't think more is actually needed. Um, like, if you're running, if you're, having, if you're constantly having time issues... Uh, just practice playing faster is really the best <laughs> advice we can give. Um, so, yeah. I think you won't have to worry about that when the EX is coming. Yeah. Probably not. And then, part three. Also, Krim, in the manliest voice possible, can you scream the Thunderdome for me? Thunderdome <laughs> is the deck of real men. The Thunderdome! <laughs> like that. That's how you do it, baby. Everybody should do it that way. Not bad, not bad. That's like, that's like my, uh, my macho wrestling man voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my macho man voice. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Thunderdome! You gotta like fist pump while you're at it too. I was pretending to hold it. Not away. like the Jersey Shore stuff. You know, you gotta do it like a man, dude. Get into All right, it. from Corey Goss. <laughs> What do you guys think of the new Vanillix, assuming it's in Next Destinies? The new Vanillix has the ability to switch your active with a Pokemon on the bench. It's it's like a warp point ability. 
Uh, and its attack is one water, two colorless, 60 plus 10 for each retreat cost for the defending Pokemon. Uh, I don't think that's very good. I'm sorry. I'm still trying it because it's two scoops of knowledge. And I am no, he means the new Vanillax, the one that I just told you about. Yeah, that's fine. I know. It's still two scoops of knowledge. What do you want me to say? It's two scoops of poop, unfortunately. No. <laughs> well... Oh, I actually won't make that joke. That was rude. <laughs> well, <you laughs> I was going to make a joke, but then I had to stop myself. Or uh, one water, rude two colors, you're doing 60 plus 10. Um, that plus for the defending Pokemon's retreat cost, that's going to be canceled out by Eevee Light. So, um, <laughs> really, you're doing 60 for 3 at most, and then you factor in the Sky Arrow Bridge, which will reduce the retreat cost. And boy. <laughs> 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 I was hoping to trap you with this one. <laughs> <laughs> that is the height of the book. <laughs> Alright, so from John Riveros, um What's up, John? What, With the speed of the game clearly going up, do you feel like rounds should be best 2 out of 3 in 45 minutes, like the grinder format, or should we keep the same round times? Uh, if the speed of the game does go up that much, then I would like two out of three forty-five. But if it doesn't, like if it two out of three forty-five is still going to be like cutting it close, uh, and I'd rather keep it at three forty-five. Honestly, I think that's like. But then, like as soon as EX has come out, you have to change the rules right back. It's like, it's not. You shouldn't have to uh, formulate tournament rules based on the format. The tournament rules should just be all encompassing, uh, regardless of format. So, well said. so um. Honestly, since the only way you can you can have two out of three like right now is to have it at least an hour for Swiss, which will take like an hour and a half per round. It's just time wise, it's not realistic to do in one day. Now if you had a two three day event, by all means do two out of three Swiss and you can even kick it up a notch, three out of five top cut. But yeah. Jason Lindsay actually made a thread about that. He said for Nationals, we should have best three out of five, two hour top cut matches. Jeez. With and reduce top, top, or top 128 or whatever? No, no, no. Reduce the top cut, do more Swiss rounds as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would take that, that part that would of be that. ideal. But three out of five is still ridiculous. Do that for finals, I guess, but everything else. And... Five out of seven. Well, he actually worked out a four. schedule, and it would four fit in the three days for Nationals quite easily. Can you finals? Four out of seven. It's just not right, though. I mean, that's just... I'd rather have, uh, like, a huge, huge Swiss like thing. Like, 16 rounds of Swiss. I would I'd rather have that. How many yeah. rounds Let's be honest. Have in proposed How, let's be honest. How many three out of fives do you think you would lose against... I don't know. Three out of five would take a lot out of you, round after round after round. Yeah, that's why it would be a smaller top cut. you probably only play three rounds of top cut at the most in one day. Since it would be at Nationals a three-day event where you'd have enough time for all this. Well, how many Swiss rounds up. do you think you'd lose? Like, think about all the losses you have from Swiss, right? And if they were two out of three, do you think you would have won? You never I'll know. lose my Swiss games. Uh, I think I would have had a much better chance of winning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of my Swiss losses have been uh, dunked. Like, I know at the marathon, the two, uh, I got dunked uh, at two different tournaments. They've been obviously before the marathon. So three out of my four tournaments that I haven't made top credit for. Not because of the dogs, but dogs are included. Yeah. So that would have, I mean, who knows? Maybe I would have thought better all of my friends. That's all I know. <clears throat> Soft suck, all right. dude. <laughs> all right, we'll take three more questions and then we'll wrap it up. It's starting to get a little late. Some of us have to wake up early in the morning. Oh, um, yeah. From Mike Reynolds, what regionals are you guys going to? Oh, sorry. The, uh, I'm going to the Philadelphia regionals. I will be attending Wisconsin regionals. I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> yeah, get back at me later. Um, there's, I'm gonna have to fly to whatever regionals I go to, because I'm uh, gonna really nowhere. Come to so. the Philadelphia regionals. Yeah, there's, there's a good chance that I will. You can um, meet your counterpart. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a good chance that I'll fly out to one of the top cut uh, regionals. If not, then I'll probably stay at uh, whatever the regionals is here, NorCal, I think. But, um, but even NorCal, I have to fly to. So, I mean, there's no point in. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll just fly with you guys, hang out with my good friends at the Top Cut. Yeah. yeah. Woo. 
right. Um, from Edmund Karras. Biggest bad beat story Krim has experienced during his <laughs> Vegas trip. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I took a set over set. That sucks. <laughs> uh, let's see how many I can count to. Um, just, today. <laughs> just the biggest. We'll, we'll narrow it down. The so biggest, biggest one. The within... biggest one while you're in Vegas. Poker related or not? Poker. I right. assume. We'll keep it PG and simple. Yeah, keep it appropriate. <laughs> Non poker related, <laughs> Chad coming. That sucked. <laughs> <laughs> poker related, um, okay. <laughs> Today I made a hero call, which basically means that I made a I called a really a really big bet on the river, uh, um, with King High. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm the best. I'm thinking you cannot bluff me, sir. I know exactly what you have, but I'm beating it. And he sheepishly shows his three five of hearts. Basically telling me, you know, good good call, sir. You you caught me. And his three five of hearts happens to be the bottom pair on the board. <laughs> I look at my hand. I look at I look back at my hand and I throw my hand into the muck, face down. <laughs> so yeah, that was actually really bad. Um, that wasn't so much a bad beat as a really bad spot. But that that just happened to me like within a few hours, so I guess that's why I'm uh, that's why I'm having a bad week, huh? <laughs> but yeah, set over set, um, Oh yeah, actually I had a huge hand, huge huge hand, and um, basically the, the absolute nuts got it all in the on the flop, biggest pot I played, or second biggest pot I played, and uh, he remembered me first for uh, uh, better flush, so that sucked too. Whatever, <laughs> this is poker. Wrong floor, playing Pokemon here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we'll take the final question for the night from Britt Pimus. Do you think the money we didn't receive at regionals is going to show up at nationals or for the TCG in general? Or did it all just disappear? Um, I think we've kind of touched on this before, but I I wouldn't judge until I see until probably the end of the year where we see what happened to it. Like we don't know where it is, unfortunately. So um, fingers crossed, I guess. <laughs> I think it's a combination of the two. I think uh, some of it is just going to inflation. Just things are more expensive now than they used to be back when they first created the budget, and they haven't acted accordingly. But um, but some of it hopefully is going towards better uh, better world prizes or trips. Uh, um, one or the other. But I think it's going to be a combination of. I don't think that the trips are going to completely make up for the for the amount that uh, that we lost out on for regionals. Yeah, I hope it shows up at worlds, but. We'll see. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, I think um, they actually posted something saying that um, the world's first place finisher now can win up to $10,000 for first place. It's not been officially released, but um, yeah, world prizes might be increased. But that is a lot of money to go missing. I don't know where it all went. I guess we'll find out. It would be nice to get top 32 prizes for worlds because, like, yeah. Um, I'm gonna be honest. That sucks. <laughs> like, you make top 32. You're like, all right, now I gotta play this one game, one match. If I win, <laughs> I'm in the huge money land, right? But if I lose, yeah. I walk away with a Nintendo DS. <laughs> you get two boxes too, or one box. <laughs> yeah, but like the prize difference between top 32. Yeah. Top six. Yeah, it was, it was like, like phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's like, all right, thanks for coming. You know, you get some promos, you get a DS, and then if you win, hey, here's a scholarship. Here's a bunch of other stuff. Here's more promos. And yeah, winning one match was like super important. There were some years where they had the DS for top sixteen and no DS for top thirty-two. So yeah. You, so yeah. you just got I've just your one box. I've experienced some of that. Um. <laughs> so hopefully those prizes get. That's up redistributed somewhere, but you never know. Um, the budget might have gone down. We don't know what's going on. And the budget did not them. go down. That, that, uh, that's guaranteed. They've stated publicly that the budget did not go down, that they're still allocating the exact same amount towards us. So the money went somewhere. Um, and it's staying with the, within us. But I'm sure that a lot of it has to do with, uh, with the fact that they weren't accounting for things going, you know, getting a lot more expensive. Hopefully the budget goes up, because that's that'd be good for us. 
Yeah. Who knows? We might be seeing a, another giant Pikachu in our near future. Maybe that's probably. Giant Pikachu, giant Pikachu. Actually, giant Pikachu. A giant, giant Squirtle. Snorlax. Oh, I'm not that lucky. I don't think that good. <laughs> Alright, maybe a giant meow. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Alright, well, I guess that's going to wrap it up. We've taken quite a few questions. Sorry mm -hmm. I didn't get to all of them, but. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, guys, have anything else you want to say before we go? Uh, well, thanks for watching. Uh, I know we kind of had some technical difficulties at the beginning, but hey, you guys made it. <laughs> um, follow us on Twitter kind of thing. I guess Kyle can take the rest. Yeah. Yep. Good night. I love you all. <laughs> Much love. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I'm obviously here in Vegas. I'm going to be here until the beginning of February. My schedule has been really hectic lately. Um, it's going to stay hectic until around stage time, but uh, I hope to get a better internet connection, more stable internet connection for next week. And, yeah, thanks for hosting, Kyle. You did pretty good. I mean, you did all right. I mean, <laughs> you could have done better. <laughs> but, I mean, hey, you know, short notice, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you should really practice at this. <laughs> you really... <laughs> You, uh, you, you actually kind of suck, but... I like you know. how you're, you're getting more and more... <laughs> like, 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 it started... Like, this this how, this how, you started off, it's like, hey, hey, you did pretty good. Wait a minute, I just gave him a compliment. <laughs> I have to take this back. Let's bring this back a minute. Uh, you did okay, it was kind of amateurish, but, um... <laughs> you know... What can you expect from someone like you, right? <laughs> Uh, I don't know whether or not to be offended, but no, it's a compliment. Right. It's a compliment, yeah, it's but sure. a, a little bit of a backhanded compliment. Gaz is used to those by now. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, we will wrap it up. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Please check out all of our various social media sites. Uh, Facebook.com/slash Topcoat Pokemon. Oh, you still can. <laughs> <laughs> follow us on Twitter at Top Cut Pokemon. Also follow all of us on Twitter. I am Puka311, uh, Crims23, what it is? Uh, uh, sure. C R I M C 23. Let's go with that. <laughs> uh, Drew Halton and Michael Primlock. Yep. Follow us all on Twitter. We don't always use it. I know I don't think I've ever seen Pram tweet a single time, but we have it. Um, follow <laughs> us I'm there. gonna tweet right. Now. I tweet. Yeah. Uh, I will start I've tweeting. Seen, I've seen Drew tweet soon. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> other than that, we have YouTube, uh, Top Cut Pokemon on YouTube. So check that out as well. We're posting new videos all the time. I'll actually upload one uh, tonight or tomorrow. I have one finished. One of the other tournaments from the Florida Marathon. I know we'll have more up soon. And, yeah, just thanks everybody for supporting us. You know, we're just a couple of players, guys who grew up playing Pokemon, and we want to see it grow on and get bigger and better for future generations. And that's just what we're doing here. So, thanks everybody for watching. Have a good night, and we will see you next time. See ya. See ya. I just posted a tweet, so everybody watch it. Crims23. <laughs>